All right. Thank you, everybody, on the recording. We're already live streaming um, and we are rocking and rolling. And I'm looking forward to um, helping people who are on this live call to be able to take the next step in our five day challenge today. Let's just jump into the presentation. I've got, I'm just going to mute Ian. There you go. Um, fantastic. All right. Good, good to see you. Right. We're rocking and rolling. Okay. So yesterday we covered, what did we cover yesterday? We covered the outreach message. Okay. The hundred clubs, so that's 20 connection requests to your new potential new connections. So sending out those 20 and 80 DMs with our straight to the point message. 80 direct messages. So that's the 100 clubs. So that's what we did yesterday. Um, so the actions are there, 80 to your first two reconnections. And then we wanted to write those connection messages using the template we sent and then send out those 20 messages. Okay, so those were the actions. Hopefully we all hit it because we can see these lovely people. So we talked about it can be done. So here's some fantastic wins that we got um, that were shared within the group. So Brad, very kindly, you 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 shared that win there. I think it might have even increased since uh, you shared that. But di nine nine direct messages sent at that point, um, we got up to a hundred. You were saying by the end of the day, um, and uh, you had one appointment in the diary. But you were saying that you had even more um, than just that one appointment um, when we were uh, talking just before the call kind of officially started. So congratulations that front on that front. Um, we have um, garden shed photography. Who's garden shed photography? Well, that's me. I'm in the I'm in the process of trying to change that, but um, it should it should say Gavin Peter Bond photography. But um, uh, I'm not really that uh, good with uh, Facebook, so I am struggling a little bit. But yeah, so I am Garden Shed. <clears throat> that's that's okay. You 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 can change that. Obviously, that's that's your uh, you just change your profile page or not mm. not your profile but your page in there. So Gavin, how how did you get on? So it's, you're saying that you you got some some warm warm leads you were you were saying it went a little bit further than that well yeah i mean by the end of the day i'd probably got five warm leads and this morning i've checked my inbox and somebody's booked in for a day uh, a day's photography so so you close the deal great work gavin that's awesome um so when you are approaching this you know what what kind of um aha moments are you having whilst you doing doing this exercise um, well, I suppose the aha moments come when people actually respond. Um, I think, I mean, you know what? I, I lost count on my tally chart. So it could have been 80 or it could have been 180 um, direct messages that I sent. I got a bit lost in it yesterday. But yeah, so <clears throat> the aha moment comes when, you know, your metrics on your website, you start seeing hits yeah. um, on your website. Um, and then, you know, people start sending you emails and they're interested in the service you provide that's that's fantastic and and it is something about the actually going straight to the point you know instead of friend zoning i think maybe you mentioned before about the kind of the idea of being a little bit more upfront, a bit more blunt um mm. and you you're worried about that at the start um <clears throat> yeah well i think it works i mean one example would be um the head of food and beverage at an international hotel chain that uh, I'm connected with on LinkedIn. And I've, you know, sent him messages before and always been a bit, um, you know, kind of not as direct. Sent him a direct message and he got straight back to me, you know, what's your, what's your day rate? So. Nice. Nice. Yeah. You get, you ask a direct question, you get direct um, answer back, you know, a direct Ooh. question back and um, it leads somewhere. So Fantastic, Gavin. Really, really chuffed um, with that progress. So uh, um, great, great to see that happening. And obviously, hopefully, then it will sort of, you know, inspire you to make this into rhythm. So we're going to be talking about locking it into rhythm. Um, actually, the rhythm part comes tomorrow. Um, so we're going to be talking about how to keep keep the uh, the the foot on the accelerator uh, with this rhythm. But uh, today we're going to be talking about actually sort getting the appointments and uh and kind of pre preceding your services in the in the appointments that's where we're going to go mm. over today fantastic um laura laura are you on the call do we have laura on the call so um if we don't um she mentioned here that she had six responses three saying hey um and we'll pass on three appointments and three appointments made um uh, in there so that's fantastic so three appointments off of uh, one day's outreach really really good and natalie also natalie do we have natalie on the call yeah i'm here hi natalie so how did you get on 
Yeah, really good. Um, I realise I haven't got enough connections, so that's the biggest challenge. Um, I managed to get 40 done, but it was a bit of a slog and I didn't do any, I didn't do the 20 new ones. But um, I have had, um, I can't remember exactly how many, <laughs> I should have tracked that, but um, I've got about six people that want to book in on a call. So it's just now a case of when I can get them, when, um, when you know, we get that bit sorted. So that's really exciting. And I had two people say, could I remind them later in the month because they're a bit busy at the moment, but they're really interested to know more. So I think I'm on the right track. Fantastic wow. news. Congratulations. I think my light, my light bulb is that um, I, I've been, I should have been hanging out on LinkedIn a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you. The, I think the point is here is that you're, we're, we're, we're getting into this network and we need to expand your network now. We need to yeah. grow those. So those 20 a day are actually really key for you because that's creating the appointments of tomorrow by making the connections of today right so really really important to pile in there so if you missed 20 yesterday well maybe and you don't have enough people to outreach doing the first degree dm today then make your 100 club a little bit more a case of put your 40 connection requests remember it's 100 connection requests a week that we can go out to so 20 a day so we do yes. that per day to make it rhythm so if you want to catch up and you could even do 60 today because obviously being wednesday um yeah. and you could catch up on there because we want to layer your connections with the potential of uh, appointments tomorrow right so this yeah. is why the work today is really important one question i did have okay. was that um where i had put in coach I had people already in my in my uh, network that would come up with that, but that weren't coming up on the search. So mm. I ended up going through my network and just chipping away at those because that my ideal customer was in there. Um, and I came across a few that would have just didn't come up in the yeah. LinkedIn search. So that was a bit strange. Maybe um, it's different different phrases. So coaches, consultants, uh, trainers. So mm. you've got a little other other ways of actually kind of trying to find that audience. Um, it is a good point that if any of us are really struggling to find first degrees within a search, go back into your network and just go from the top to the bottom and just work on this DM outreach from there. You, I think Brad was doing that as well. That's why he, he took him a little bit of time as well, filtering field days. It's a slower way of doing it because not everybody in that search will be right. But at the same time, you you can see the results. The more you put in, the more you get out. So it's worth actually doing the uh, the work on it. So amazing, Natalie. Delighted with that. So um, I think the point is here, gang. Let's have a look at you all. Um, the 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 point being is that we want to see these inquiries. You want to see those connections, and you want to use these outreach messages to get in there and get straight to the point get those appointments right so that's what that's that's what's happened and that's what we want to get you to do another 80 and 20 today so your 100 club again today cool good morning good morning good morning good to see you all right so let's uh let's crack on to what we're going to do so um in terms of today what we're going to cover is this centerpiece right so we're we're going to be talking about the nudge campaign uh tomorrow but today we're going to be talking about actually getting the booking really nicely set up with qualifying in there so as we're going out we want to also qualify people into our diary because we're not um although we're being straight to the point not every meeting should be taken right so we're going to actually give you a bit of skill to be able to qualify those appointments into your diary and we're going to also give us a little bit of bonus value to those people that are jumping into your diary and thinking about actually warming them up before they even hit you so your opportunity in that meeting and the potential in that meeting is far better so your close rate should be better off the back of what we're going to work on today um cool so that's the systems that's what we're going to work on today so formalize your search strategy session booking system create a quick lead qualification plan and then create a yes to bookings re reply template which is where we're going to start okay so here's the template that we use when someone says yes i would like to book it so what we want to try and do is actually get them to use your Calendly um, booking link because we can then automate reminders off the back of that Calendly booking link, which we're going to talk about second. OK, so when we actually get a yes reply and I'm going to chuck this in the chat so you guys can use it. Um, this is the message that we go out with. OK, so bam, that's in the chat. So we talk about great. Um, I say I look forward 
to it. So if someone says, yes, let's have a meeting and say, great, I look forward to it. Probably the best way to find space in both of our diaries is via the below link. I hope that's okay and easy. And then you give them the link to your Calendly, right? Nice and simple. But the point of this is we're templating everything. So you can have a common center delivery, deliverable. So it's just copy, paste, copy, paste all the time, right? Um, so let me just chuck this into the Facebook group as well in the comments. Good to see you guys on the, on the Facebook group. There's the template gone into the live stream there. Um, so this is the yes to booking reply. So I want you to keep that. Keep that if you're if you've if you're doing this on your phone when you're you know sometimes people do it on the phone in the evenings um you know I, I sometimes do that particularly if my wife's watching something awful like Big Brother or something God knows like the Jungle or whatever um I'll I'll sit there and I'll do some LinkedIn replies and I'll have a note on my phone with these sort of set up templates right and so I'll go onto it I'll copy and paste and I'll go bam 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 and I'll use these set templates and I'll paste those I'll also have some outreach templates um I'll have some DM templates so I can copy and paste when I'm on my phone or if I'm on the train or whatever it is you can have these set up um if you've got if you're using your laptop or whatever and you're doing it in the morning then you can just literally have a word document and in that word document you can save some of these templates that we've been handing out and then you can just copy paste copy paste right so you just have like a a linkedin outreach doc and then you're constantly into there okay so this i, is... I would use trello for that richard just sorry to put yes. in but trello is great because it's on everything it's on your phone on your computer so you you know you can have your templates set up and they're really easy to copy and paste. love it i i am a huge believer in trello a massive massive fan of trello so uh so yeah if trello's if trello's your thing then you can jump on there and use trello um trello's my favorite cost it's free um so you can have a play about with it as much as you want um and it won't cost you anything lovely um good so here you go so this is the outreach template to be able to use right good stuff mm -hmm. um the next step is to set up your calendly correctly now there is acuity there's other ways of being able to do this but i'm going to show you candidly because many people will use a scheduling software like this totally cool but we want you to take it to the one step further and use this to drive um the warming up sequence and reminder sequence and to be able to unlock all the value within trello right so we're going to do a bit of advanced work on this today okay so first of all when you're setting up an appointment, you'll be able to get an appointment booking form that looks like this. Now, there's a couple of things that we say to just utilize to make sure that you can actually work out, are these going to be a great appointment for you when they book? OK, and there's these two questions. So name, email, phone number are kind of standard. You know, we, we, we want that so we can follow people up if they miss appointments, et cetera. Right. Um, but. Here you'll see I've got website and I've got a second question, which is where would you like your business to be 12 months from now? Those two questions are all the questions I need answered to qualify someone into being a potential lead for me. Why is that? Well, if someone has a website, I can instantly go on it and uh, having done this for years and years and years, I've got an act to be able to scan a website and go, right, that person kind of has thought about their marketing, has clearly thought about their messaging, and is probably ready to think about scaling their business, right? So they are, they have it set up. If they don't have a website, that's an, or an orange flag for us. Um, if they have a website, but it's like broken or it's like uh, um, stuff that's all over the place, or it's a website that's um, maybe for something that isn't quite right. So for example, it could be, um, you know, we, we say we want to go and work with a coach, but there could be someone on there that says they're a nutrition coach, but actually really what they are, they're, they're a network marketer and they're selling a product um on there right and so that's a common that's a common thing for us to be able to see now there's nothing wrong with network marketing but we don't deal with anybody that sells product we are a specialist in business services so that's what we do whereas if someone is selling you know aloe vera or whatever it is that's great you know we think that those sort of businesses are fantastic businesses but it's not our business right any e-commerce not our business so that's a fantastic way of me being able to say sorry um dave um you know your business is great but we only, we don't work with anybody that sells products so i'm gonna have to cancel this meeting you know so it, it's, it allows me to qualify at that stage cool the second question is a great qualifier as well because if i ask someone look where would you like to be 
12 months from now, it's a window into their ambition. And that window into the ambition, if someone says, oh, I'd like to be, you know, turning over, you know, I'd like to, I'd like to have a good side hustle, you know, something that's subsequent, you know, to sort of topping up my full-time income in 12 months from now, or, you know, I'd like to set up something new. Someone wants to set up something new or top up some full-time income, et cetera. That helps us to realize that they're not, they're too early stage for us, right? So therefore we can qualify that person out and say, look, you know, um, I just don't think this is right for us. We work with people that are turning over, you know, um, yeah, some revenue who want to get to a million in revenue. Uh, we're not looking to try and add a side hustle on for you, et cetera. And so therefore it allows us to qualify that person out. And it's just a very, you know, sensible adult email that I can say and send to someone and thank them for their time, but then to cancel the meeting because an hour of my time is valuable to me. And so therefore I don't want to spend that if it's not gonna go anywhere, right? We should all be feeling the same way. And so by having these two qualifying uh, questions on our Calendly forms allows us to actually think a little bit more strategic in terms of our time and the appointments that we're getting, right? Um, Serena, um, I'm gonna take your question now uh, and then uh, um, we can then move on to the next slide. Go for it. Thank you, Richard. Um, so I obviously, we sell health and wellness services to CEOs. So uh, a qualifying question would be of a personal nature, you know. Um, we've seen their website doesn't necessarily qualify them or disqualify them as, as a potential lead. And I guess the 12 months question could be relevant. Where do you see yourself with your health and well-being 12 months? But um, do you think it would be appropriate to uh, ask a personal qualifying question at this stage or uh, yeah, yeah, yes i do yeah yes i do so so this is a um some other examples so simple lead qualifying questions that you may be able to use so so don't just get stuck on those ones these are two other you know these are a set of other questions now i only you only probably really need to ask one maximum two qualifying questions. Remember, you don't want people to have to fill in the chapter and verse to be able to get an appointment to you. So you want them to be able to do it on their phone quickly, et cetera. Um, but these type of questions. So for example, what's your biggest priority right now could be interesting for you. Um, obviously, the way, where do you want to be in 12 months from now? But you, but you could be saying more like, where would you want your health to be 12 months from now? You know, uh, what are your health goals for the next 12 months right so that that can really give you a nice window into their mindset um uh you know if you're talking about um if, if you do leadership coaching right you could be talking about how big is your team or if you provide um lead generation services or marketing services how big their team is also quite important like how big is your sales team because that will tell you how many leads they might need to better feed their sales team right so so those type of questions if you get them right one or two questions can really qualify people before you even have to spend time with them. Okay. Um, you know, what have you tried in the past and what's, and what happened, you know? So that could be quite interesting when you're talking about your, so you could be saying two questions. So well, where would you like your health to be 12 months from now? And what have you tried in the past and what happened? Right. So that could really give you a nice uh, qualifying. Um, what does success look like to you? Never great qualifying question, right? Whatever you do, don't um, use yeah, all of I've these. I've got a um, ticket from London to Newcastle on Monday the 7th. <laughs> I've got a ticket effect. from London to Newcastle as well. Um, so, <laughs> go ahead then, Catherine. Uh, so, Siri, does that answer your question? Yeah, that's perfect. That's perfect. Thank you, perfect. Richard. Uh, just a quick other one. Of course. Um, I'm still curious to hear from you at a moment that you feel is appropriate. How can I A-B test those two messages? Because so far, I'm just focusing on one. Yeah. Uh, and therefore I have updated the header to match the, the message that mm -hmm. I'm sending. But I'd be curious to see what the other one does. And so I'm curious to hear what your what your best strategy is for that. So so we will um so so tomorrow we will be talking about the continuation of the sequence, but let me just give you a, a bit of an insight. So um you'll you'll be doing um nudges tomorrow. So so on a typical week, Monday, you'll be doing your 80 outreach, Tuesday, you'll be doing 80 outreach, 
And Monday, Tuesday, obviously you're doing your 20 a day. You're doing 20 a day connections or every single day, five days a week, right? Um, on Wednesday, you're just doing your 20 connections because on Thursday, you're nudging day uh, Mondays and uh, Friday, you're nudging Tuesdays, right? So th that's that's how it's going to work. We'll be talking about that tomorrow. So if you're A-B testing, what you do is you do message A on a Monday and then you nudge with nudge A on a Thursday. And then you do message B on a Tuesday, and then you nudge message B on a Friday. There's a graphic right. that will really bring that to life, but that if That's just to give you a little bit of a kind of a pre pre <laughs> pre pre window on that one. Does that help? And so essentially, I, I, yeah, I would stick with one header that in that instance. There's no point going in and out, swapping mm. the header from mm -hmm. one day to the next. No, don't no don't yeah don't overchange your header. Don't overchange your header. Have a campaign, you know, so you run the campaign for a few weeks um, at, at minimum with that header. Cool. Okay, good stuff. Right. Thank you. No worries, no worries. Um, uh, so, so these are examples that you can put into your qualifying questions. Okay, gang. Good stuff. So the next stage is the reminder emails. Now, this is um, a type of email as an example um, that helps to precede your services before someone sees you, because it's lovely. You don't have to give people homework before doing the meeting with you. But when someone's excited, oh, I'm really looking forward to having my, you know, do, do my, my health, my health check, you know, discovery meeting with Serena. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm excited. So then you send me an email with a couple of extra resources, I will be in a really good position mindset wise to actually consume those. And the more that we kind of consume your thought leadership before I actually meet you, the higher your credibility and your cachet goes up. So when I actually see you face to face, I'm like, oh, right. OK, I've already read that or I've watched your video and I've, and I've, I've warmed to you even further. OK, so here's a nice little template. Oh, hello. Let me go back and I'm going to share this with you. So you can see here subject line is like our meeting on the 1st of Feb um, and it will say things such as great to catch up. Um, I'm looking forward to the meeting on this date here. I'm just chucking it into the chat for everybody now. So that's in the chat. And of course, I'm going to chuck it into the chat in the Facebook group as well there. Um, and uh, let's go back to the actual call. So the you can see here the the session there says, hey, look, here's the session. Here's the notes. This is the time. This is the join link. Now, the nice thing about all of this, it can be auto generated by by your Calendly. And I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and then it says, In the meantime, here is some further training. So for me, that's just a nice link to a, uh, um, a YouTube video. Um, further training on double your income work half the time and then you can see here i also wrote a thesis on how you can scale to a million in revenue right so that's like a long form blog post right what you do is you try and collate some maybe a, you've got a pdf download maybe you've got a little mini training video series maybe you've got a couple of youtube videos that you're really proud of stick those in make people spend a bit of time with you before actually spending time with you, right? Um, so let me just uh, uh, reshare and get into Calendly and show you how to set this up. Um, really, really important to get this stuff automated because it's just slick. So here's Calendly. Uh, <clears throat> and if you set it up now, this, I'm going to show you the premium features uh, because the premium features will will help um, to do a lot of the automation, right? So premium, when I say premium for Canly, you're talking like $15 a month or something. It's cheap. Um, so it's well worth using this skill, right? In here, you've got things called workflows and you set up a workflow here. So you can see this workflow here. I've got an email and a text message reminder that goes out 24 hours beforehand. I got an email and a text message reminder that goes out 45 minutes before, and then one that goes out five minutes before, right? So I've got three reminders ahead of every single meeting. Um, it means that if someone books within 24 hours, they're only gonna get those two, um, but this is the real legwork meeting. So you click on here and I'll show you. Um, and when you set up this workflow, you can apply which of the events it, where it applies to, um, and you can call it whatever you want to call it. So email and text message reminders 24 hours beforehand. When this happens 24 hours before it starts, um, and then do this. Send an email, send a text message, right? 
Uh, and so if I go into this email, you'll see here the title of it, reminder, event name with event organizer, event time and date, right? So these are all smart variable fields. So you can see here, you can choose the different variable fields. Um, then in here, you'll see that this is a very familiar because this is the template that I've just shared with you, right? Hi, you know, first name, um, invitees full name. This is a reminder that you've got this event on this date, on this date. Um, and in advance, you may like to check out and then resource one, resource two. Cool. And then that just is set up to go. Um, and you can include a cancel and resubscribe link. I always do that because at the end of the day, if someone needs to to, to cancel or, or um, re, reschedule, I'd rather they just do it automatically instead of then emailing me and then I've got to go mess around with it. I'd rather them just use the features on there. Um, and I include a cancellation policy and my cancellation policy says that, you know, these spaces are limited. So um, don't cancel within kind of, you know, 12 hours, et cetera, um, in there. Cool. So that works really nicely. And then I can edit this. And I, when I'm doing text messages, I don't worry about sending further uh, reading. It's just a very much a short kind of, hey, just a reminder, we've got an event name and this date. See you tomorrow. And then give the Zoom link for the event. Cool. So I just want you guys to set this up really smartly because it will help people come to the meeting. So when people come to meetings with me, they go, yeah, I read your thesis. And yeah, I did check out that video. Um, and they are, you know, deep pieces of thought leadership. And that puts people in a fantastic mindset when we actually then have that conversation with them. Asa, go over to you, question. Hi, Richard. Sorry, I was late today. I was at the uh, GP. Anyway, my question is uh, very short. Uh, does Calendly send these emails automatically to the name or should we type the name? I mean, name is name of the client is automatically written yeah. by or yeah. given by. Uh, yeah. Do you understand so so when, when a client books in, they, they will be filling in that form. One one of which will be their email address, one of which will be their name, right? Mm -hmm. So when you've got a gig, a high invitee full name. Um, mm -hmm. So that's a that's a variable, that's a dynamic field. Um, yeah. Event name is a dynamic field. You know, your mm -hmm. name, time, mm -hmm. date is a dynamic field. Location is a dynamic field. So if you set up the event right, all of that information comes out. So in terms of setting up the event, I don't necessarily cover that. It's a very simple uh, thing mm -hmm. to do you know it you know you just create an event here uh, and you can create a one-off meeting or create an event type and you can take you know create uh what i do such as strategy sessions and yeah for example here's the strategy sessions this is how the event type when can people book it and it kind of mm -hmm. shows the dates and stuff where people can book it i've just have one one slot which is my 12 30 slot every single week so <laughs> I'm not going to show you how to set up actually events in Calendly, et cetera, because it's mm -hmm. pretty, you know, it's, it's self, self-explanatory. That is what they're mm -hmm. doing. What I wanted to show you was the advanced warming up a reminders piece because everybody leaves those on the table. Okay, good. Thank you. Well, yes. Sorry, go on. Was that you just saying thank you? Okay, cool. Okay, good. So just, I'm just conscious of time. So I just want to just do these final pieces. So that's the bit that's going to help. So remember today, I want you to set up your Calendly's right. Okay, so we are going to get that right. We're going, so we're going to set up your Calendly for, fully with those nice reminders. So it just means that you're warming people up. I want you to write your pre-meeting email, right? So that pre-meeting, i.e., you know, confirming this date this time and he, yeah in advance of this here's a great link here's a great link right um and then also i want you to hit your 100 club again today okay so that's your 20 connections and your 80 uh dms if you haven't got enough first degree connections to hit your 80 dms then that just tells you you've got to work more on getting your first degree connections up make sense cool good stuff right so remember, this is all part of a sequence, okay? So awareness, consider, convert, and then deliver. What do we mean by deliver? That's delighting people when they buy, buy your flagship product, gamifying your product so people win at your product, and then creating advocates that then re re recommend you to other people, okay? So this is all part of the funnel. This is the million-dollar sprint 
a six step process. Okay, so awareness, consider, convert. So we are building awareness with our outreach. We are building consideration with people looking and, and reading further material before they come into our meetings where we convert. OK, so a lot of this is what's working in this funnel. So you can see it here. Um, this, just so you know, is the million dollar sprint process. OK, so this is the stuff that we'll be talking about later on today for people that have booked into this. So we have different heats where we get people from 5k per month, 10k per month, 20k per month in our gold medal race, which is 40k per month, and then 84k per month, which is our Hall of Fame. OK, so different elements help you to get to different stages. A lot of what we're doing here is the preliminaries to heat one stuff. Um, and then we want to help you to kick on from there. OK, um, so if you've been able to see people or you yourself are booking appointments within one day of activity, working on the systems that we help our clients work on, imagine what together you and I can do in 12 months time uh, working with each other. Okay. Um, and so that's what we're doing and what's what I'm demonstrating at this 1230 meeting today. And I'd love to invite you guys along to it. We've already got, I think, 12 or 13 people booked on today. So um, the spaces are not are limited. So make sure that you do grab your space. We'll be talking about that further system, that, that wiggly line. We'll be talking about that journey to uh, the Hall of Fame further. I'll be demonstrating how this LinkedIn process can be automated. So you can be able to do a lot of the work um, automatically. And I'll be demonstrating how you can outsource the rest of this work to someone else to then manage it for you. So then you can focus on just sales meetings and delivery of your service, right? Um, and then finally, we'll be looking at making sure that you're selling the right high ticket product. So if you're not trying to sell too many products, trying to sell one really big flagship product, because that will really help you to be able to scale. Okay, so we'll be talking about all that stuff today. So I'm really looking forward to people who are going to come along to that. Um, so it's a first come first serve. Uh, we still got spaces available for it. Um, and I'm just going to chuck that into the chat one last time. And then I'm going to take some questions uh, there. So here's the booking link for you guys to jump onto. And again, I'll just chuck that into the Facebook group. There you go. And look forward to seeing everybody at 12 30 today to go through that stuff um cool but we still got time now so um, um let's take some further questions um so into the room then gang um what have we what, what, what do we see today what have we been thinking <clears throat> silence <clears throat> <laughs> brad go hey, get, oh sorry, oh, sorry. I, I, go, brad then serena it, it's really important, uh, Richard, that point you make about positioning this as a business meeting. It's very easy to waste a lot of time um, avoiding rejection, going back in that friend zone again and dancing around the handbags of, um, you know, this is, well, let's just have a chat and see where it goes. Yeah. And you can spend a lot of time on chats, but fundamentally you've got to make some money. So positioning that in a in a sensitive way, but you know, being direct, like with a direct email, is important. Fantastic, yeah. So so true, and that that's why, you know, you you you've worked really hard for someone to reply to you from being very straight to the point. Don't then soften that positioning to make it into a virtual coffee. And it's not that. It's you actually demonstrating your product to them. You know, it's that's that's the dynamic of that call. Um, so we worked hard for them to respond to that. So don't don't kind of snatch defeat from the jaws of victory um, mm. when you're going doing the outreach. So great point, Brad. Love that. Um, Serena, Serena, then Claire. I had a question revolving around, uh, you know, that you, when you do in the search box, you look for your audience, right? And you do like CEO plus whatever the industry plus London, for instance. Yes. Um, I'm looking for some inspiration because obviously our target audience or the people that we feel really resonate with our approach are CEO of businesses who have an impact, you know, so kind mm -hmm. of socially responsible businesses or healthcare, et cetera, mm -hmm. et cetera. What could, be, what could be some key words that I could look for in order to really iron in in an audience that cares about sustainability and love it yeah um go for b corp right so oh, that's um, it that's it 
before. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if um, we, we, we've got a few clients that go off um, sustainable brands. Um, I'm just going to mute you, Abby. Um, so if you go B, I think, I think they do it like this corp. Uh, yeah. Plus London plus CEO or something like that. Um, you should be able to get it's obviously it's not huge um yeah look at that it, that's probably if i just go if i lose the ceo piece and uh yeah so 41 so might be just the way that i'm spelling b or the way that i'm kind of writing it so you got 41 people in there but what if i do this does that make a difference yeah five five six three now uh, yeah, Brilliant. B Corp strategy and communication, certified B Corp. So what, what we've realized is that the, um, the the kind of B Corp, the way that they write it has, has different variations, and that does make a difference. Um, but you can see here that there's quite a few, you know, um, credibility, impact communications. I mean, you can put the word impact, right? And and by seeing this search like this, this this is a great lesson for all of us. Is that once you kind of get down into the into the weeds with these searches, you then see other phrases. So you can see, you know, e ESG. You know, I don't know what that means, but that could be something. You know, impact is another phrase that they seem to be using, right? Um, so you start to just have a look, but look, certified B Corp, B Corp, certified B Corp. So that that can be a really nice one. Obviously, you've got the UN global goals but but people don't identify as a a you know ceo or un global goals whatever it is business right whereas people do identify as a b corp you know per, uh, business so um hopefully that helps yeah absolutely one last question sorry i'm being cheeky today asking a little question um i is it possible that I might have too much information and things for them to check out on my confirmation email? Because I have a report and I, we have the scorecard and then we have several videos, like four or five testimonial videos. Yeah, Is that just overkill? two. Go to. Two yeah, remember, remember you, 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 they've got your website. They've got other ways of being able to find out more about you, but just send you your two best. Just just because otherwise you don't want to overwhelm people. Um, other people make the mistake of giving people homework and scorecard is classic for this. So people say before our meeting, I need you to make do this scorecard. Whereas I'm like, well, pff, I don't want, you know, you, you, you you've got the meeting, you know, you, you know, don't don't ask me to do more stuff. Right. So there's there, there's sometimes that resistance. So what we've said to clients is you can say, look, um, it's not essential, but if you want to make uh, this meeting, you know, uh, 11 out of 10, then um, you might like to do the scorecard beforehand because it will give me some further information. You know, so it's a little bit less kind of like you have to. Um, but um, scorecard is definitely obviously it will enrich the meeting. So you can you can kind of use that as the carrot uh, for people to do. It. Thank you. No worries. Uh, care. Uh, excuse me queen of calm um yes question <laughs> um so i help people with stress and i i coach them so would i call my meet my business meeting and out can i call it an hour of coaching it would be like a free hour of coaching like my because i don't really do a discovery call I prefer to actually get in and do an hour of coaching and have some and you know create impact um so is it okay to kind of call it that call it I would a free hour of coaching. I, I would move away from that. Um, the reason why is you give me free, I don't value it so much. And I would a strategy session is very much you bringing them in and and getting to the root and asking those questions, like you probably would do with your coaching, but asking them to the depth question to find out where the pain is. And so when you're doing any sort of strategy session, you want to find out where they are now where they want to be and then you show them the journey from where they are now to where they want to be and that journey is your product and you pitch then that product to them so that's how you set up a strategy session now have doing that right means that you're creating the pain and the gap that inspires them to want to buy the solution to fill those two things in so it should be very much set up in a way that's 
actually follows a system and that system um, should then be a repeatable system that you improve and improve and improve to be able to therefore improve your close rate. Um, now, it will be coachy because that's, you know, as, as, as business service sector companies, we, we should always be doing a consultative sale. Um, and so for you, you, you will be getting, getting them thinking about their pains and getting them thinking about their, their problems, but you're not trying to coach them into some sort of solution in the meeting. You're showing them that you could do, but they got to buy your services. Yeah, cool. I quite like calling it a strategy session. The only thing is it doesn't begin with a C. And so I'm going to have to like play with a lot. I'm an ex, <laughs> an ex primary school teacher. So it's got to have alliteration. <laughs> it's got, okay. We've got a, well, a curiosity clarity session. Clarity call. <laughs> a, 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 a clarity call. There you clarity go. call. Thank you, I'm, David. You've made my day. <laughs> 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 perfect perfect all right lovely thank you so much no no worries at all no worries at all um cool back into the room then gang further questions it's cool if we want to get if we you know we want to leave a bit of time sometimes jump in and do this stuff so if that's uh if that's what people want to do they want to jump in and actually get stuff done then i'm all for it but um I'll, I'll fi final call for any questions, gang. Um, otherwise, we'll we'll call it a day. All right, no problem at all. Well, look, fantastic to all see you. Um, I will uh, uh, look forward to seeing anybody that's going to be joining me at twelve thirty. Um, but also be here tomorrow, where we're going to be doing nudges, right? And the nudges is where uh, you get the extra juice from the squeeze. So uh, looking forward to seeing you all tomorrow for that. All right, guys, big love. Take care and uh, see you on the flip side.